Welcome back to the MSG 150. I'm Sam Rothman. It's one of Syracuse basketball's greatest matchups. No, I'm not talking about Georgetown or Duke. I'm talking about Colgate, SU Central New York neighbor. Welcome to sports. I'm Sam Rothman. The last time these two teams met, the Orange ended the Lakers postseason in the CHA semifinals. That one was a back and forth battle all night. It was tied late in the third. And in key moments, you want your veteran players to step up. And that's exactly what Lindsey Eastwood did. And I talked to Quincy Gale about it after the game and he says once they have that lead they kind of take a step back they get too comfortable that wasn't the case tonight whether it was Gerard coming out and knocking down back-to-back -back threes Bryson Godine coming in getting a huge rebound lobbing it over to Elijah Hughes for the score buddy and Jimmy on the court coach Jim on the sidelines mom Julie in the stands guys Thanksgiving just one week away so who will be getting bragging rights at the dinner table you talked about driving three hours you never miss a home game is that right to be honest, I missed one this week on Tuesday because I was coaching a high school hockey team, uh, so I couldn't get away. All right, good excuse, good excuse. So you are a coach. You coach your daughter. You also coach Laura Bell and Fontaine, Shelby Kaloff. How nice is it watching them all play together at the college level? Just a week ago, the Syracuse defense didn't allow a single player to cross the goal line. Today, the Louisville Cardinals barreled through the end zone eight times in their 56-34 win. The difference? Speed. And now for an orange team that says they're the new fast, these Cardinals gave them a run for their money. Back in December, the Orange swept the weekend series, outscoring the Lions 20 to 1. So I asked Lyndon Wood head coach Shelly Looney what the biggest difference was coming into this weekend, and she said, well, we have healthy goalies. That's because last time both of Lyndon Wood's netminders were hurt. So get this, they threw two forwards in net. And back in Italy, we did see some man defense, and yeah. coach has hinted that maybe we'll see some early on in the season. So yeah. I got to ask, what's the story on that? <laughs> uh, I don't, it, he really surprised me with it, too. You're on the power play. Time is winding down. You get the puck on your stick. What are you thinking? I mean, it was tight at the end there. The pressure was on. We had an opportunity on the power play. We just had to capitalize, and I just knew. Emma was screening in front of the goalie. I just had to get a shot on net, and then I chucked it there, and it went in. So, yeah. A huge game winner for you, but before that, it was all Lindenwood. They were applying the pressure. What does it say about your team that you were able to pull off this win and fend off that late push from the Lions? Yeah, I think uh, good teams find a way to win, and that's what we did tonight. We're top 50 top players. Good. Right. Good. And you're on that list. I'm on that list. Surrounded by great company. Yes. You can agree to that, right? Good question. But you're a little bitter about your placement on the list, and you have some proof. I'm embarrassed to say <laughs> that it's true, but I'm embarrassed. You have some proof of why you should be a little bit higher. Well, yes. Yes. Snow isn't on the ground quite yet here in Syracuse, but the ice is ready at the War Memorial because it's finally hockey season. The Crunch are coming off one of their best seasons in team history where they either matched or set franchise records in points, wins, fewest losses. I think you get it. The list goes on and on. But at the top of that list was clinching the North Division. So no better way to kick off this season than taking on the team Syracuse clinched against, the Rochester Americans. The Americans hoping to get some revenge on home ice after the crunch ended their hopes of the division title. 1-0 Rochester, but Corey Conacher blasts one from the right circle. Crunch evened it up on the power play, and the Amherst would regain the one goal lead, but Danik Martell from absolutely no no angle, he finds the back of the net. That's the first goal for him since April 2018. So extra time needed to settle it. Rochester two on one and Tage Thompson, the overtime hero. The Amrix forward opens up the scoring and finishes it. All right, young fella. You're on your best behavior now. And how young is that young fella? Well, just let Marsh Webster tell you himself. I turned 96 yesterday. 96 and still playing hockey, which means Marsh has been hitting the ice for quite some time. About 80 years. It all started with a tryout for his high school squad. That was back in 1939. Marsh has only missed one season since to go defend our country in World War II. But after that, it was back to business the next year and the year after and the year after. When winter comes around, it's uh, just a natural thing for me to grab the hockey skates and get back into it. And by 96 years old, most players 
would have hung up their skates by now. But Marsh says there's one reason that keeps them on the ice. The love of the game, I guess, is the only way I could explain it. Marsh now plays on the Syracuse Grey Wolves, a squad made up of players all over the age of 50. While Marsh is the oldest on the team, P. Lashur gives him a run for his money at 81. And while Marsh's passion for the sport drives him, Marsh in turn inspires others to keep playing. There's days I get out of bed and I say, uh, do I want to go skate? But number one, I know Marsh Webster at 96 is going to be here. So shame on me if I don't show up. And like Marsh, Pete still plays because he says there's nothing like it. The minute you walk in the locker room, you say to yourself, jeepers, why would I want to walk away from this? But through the years, Marsh says his priorities have changed just a little. I don't worry about scoring, but if I can uh, get the puck and I can make a good pass to some one of the younger kids and they score, that's fine. That's good enough for me now. <laughs> but sometimes he does it all on his own. There goes Marsh. Oh, hey, Marsh! That technically was offside. So the play might have been offsides, but hey, the refs didn't see it at 96. The Grey Wolves will let that one go. In Skinny Atlas, I'm Sam Rothman.